Okay, we are recording. We are live. Welcome, everybody. Um, it is, as I mentioned, the uh, Thursday, the 24th of November, which in, in, in U the US and many other countries is Thanksgiving. So um, for those of you who are joining me today, welcome. Um, if you're still busy getting your, your WordPress environment ready, please remember to download the, the plugin. Uh, I will copy the plugin link and paste it into the chat for you. Uh, and you can just grab that if you haven't already. Um, and then we can we can go on. Um, so today we're going to continue developing blocks without React. Uh, we're going to be fo focusing on attributes and the rich text component today because those are two things that work well together. Um, but before we get going, a, a few announcements as usual. Uh, again, welcome to everybody. Welcome to everybody joining today. Um, I don't have a co-host with me today, unfortunately, so please bear with me while I copy links into the chat as we go through. Um, and please bear with me if I don't see your questions in the chat immediately, but I will keep checking the chat for any questions. Uh, as always, we are presenting in focus mode, but please do consider enabling your video if you would like to, so I can see you if you want me to see you. Um, you are, as always, welcome to ask questions, and you're welcome to either post them in the chat or unmute to ask questions as we go through. Okay, um, then moving on. Um, I'm going to mention this very briefly, but please do consider taking the Learn uh, WordPress Learner Survey. If you've been using the tutorials and the lesson plans and the workshops on the Learn WordPress platform, we want to know what folks like, what they don't like, what they want us to do more of, what they want us to do less of. So please do consider taking that survey. Uh, one last reminder to get your local install ready if you haven't already, uh, and download and install the, the plugin. Um, and as always, if I'm going too fast, please do let me know. And today I am limited by time, so I might rush a little bit, and I apologize for that. I will be posting this to WordPress TV afterwards. Uh, and for more WordPress-focused content, do visit learn.wordpress.org. Okay, so today, <clears throat> as I say, we're going to be um, carrying on from the part one workshop that we did uh, where we started building a basic block. Um, we're going to be reviewing that code, just very quickly running through what we did there. Uh, and then we're going to cover some general developer tools, principles for block development, um, some things that I find handy when I'm developing blocks. Then we're going to add an attribute to the block, and we're going to talk about attributes and how they work. And then we're going to implement the rich text component so that we can edit that attribute. Um, and I'll explain why we use the rich text component in this example. Um, and why it's a good piece of, of code to use. And then we're going to make it possible to edit and save the content of the block um, using the rich text component and the attribute. Um, OK, so our objectives for today, very quickly, we're going to review the block code. We're going to look at uh, browser developer tools, clearing the browser cache, and enabling WordPress debugging, which is something very useful when you're working with WordPress code. Then we're going to add the string attribute to the block. We're going to update the attributes and include a default value so that the value passes through. Then I'm going to show you how the attribute is passed to the block. And while we're there, we're going to talk about the difference between a block's properties or props and block props, which is a special thing. Um, then we're going to implement the rich text component so that folks can edit the block. Uh, we're going to update the component to use the attribute value. And then we're also going to implement some unchanged functionality so that you can edit the code and it'll save it back to the attribute. Uh, and that'll be using the set attributes function. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the props. Um, and then we're going to update the save function to also use the rich text for the content and the rendering and the updated value so that when we edit it in the edit function and in the editor, it changes the attribute value, saves it in the save, and then presents it on the front end. And then if there's time, which we might not have in this session, if we run out of time, I'll record it separately. separately uh, we'll be doing some, some refactoring and some cleanup before we move on to the next step. Okay, hopefully everybody is ready to go. Um, let's do some coding. So just as a refresher, um, I have got the plugin installed. It's currently at version 0.0.2. Um, I do have it on my desktop, and I just quickly installed it before we started. I'm going to pop over to my uh, code editor so we can have a look at what the plugin does and just review that code very quickly. Um, so we created in the first session, we created the block.json file, which is the block metadata. So it's all the information about the block. It includes the title, it includes the name of the block, the category that belongs to the icon, and then maps the files that it needs to, to map to. So the main editor script file, which is the main block file, and then any style sheets that it uses. Uh, we also created the asset file, which manages all the dependence, dependencies for the block. Um, and I mentioned that if you're using Node.js or NPM to build your block every time using that build step, this file gets regenerated for you every time. If you're not using that, which is what we're doing, you have to manually add your dependencies to this file. Um, 
we created the main block code, the block.js file, and we implemented the blocks element and block editor um, modules or packages or components that are available in the global uh, WP element. It's this window WP element. So that ships with WordPress. It's available when WordPress loads. It loads it up in JavaScript. It's a JavaScript object that you can always implement. And we then pass those through to this um, IFEE function. It's an automatically uh, running function. It fires automatically. Um, and we set up the blocks element and block editor variables to be able to pull things from there. Um, we then set up this, this variable called EL, which is basically just a copy of the create element function so that we can create the elements in our edit and save functions. We use the register block type function to register the block type. And we made sure that we gave it the same name parameter as we specified in block JSON over here. Um, and then we specified an edit function, which is the function that fires when you are editing the block, and it's what shows, uh, what renders to the user in the editor. And all we did there was we returned a simple element of a paragraph type or a p tag. We we made sure we got the block props from the use block props hook, which we'll be discussing in a second. And then we just gave it a very simple um, child element of some text. Um, so the paragraph has a child element, and that's just the text. Uh, and then in the save function, we effectively did the same thing. We we set up the block props again, and we res returned a similar element. And the only difference there was we we changed the text in the editor one and in the front end differently so that we could see what they look like. Uh, the other thing we did, um, if we have a look at the block.json, we specified some styling. So we specified a style sheet for that gets loaded in the editor, and we specified a style sheet that gets loaded when it's rendering on the front end. And in the editor style sheet, we have a green background, white text, and 20 pixels of padding. And in the front end, we had a red background, white text, and 20 pixels of padding. Um, so let's have a look at what that just looks like in the front end very quickly, uh, or at least in both the, the editor and the front end. So I'm going to go to a post, and I'm going to create a new post for today. Um, and I'm going to say, hello, JavaScript, just for fun. <laughs> and I'm going to add my block, and there's my learn JavaScript block. And there it is. It has some plain text. It has the green background and the padding and all those kind of things. And if I then preview this um, in a new tab, in other words, rendering on the front end, there is the red with the different text. So that's how it all works. It was very simple. We can't edit it. We can only move it around or remove it from the editor. Okay, so that's where we are now, and we're going to continue from here. Now, ideally, we would want the user to be able to edit this information. So currently, if you um, look at developer tools, and we're going to talk about developer tools in a second, but I'm just going to open them up very quickly. This is just a paragraph tag. Um, so a paragraph tag is a static thing. It doesn't allow any editing. So we would like to implement some way of the user being able to edit this in the editor, and then some way of saving it. And that's where attributes and the rich text component comes in. Before we go any further, while we're looking at developer tools, let's talk about some developer tools, uh, some tips and tricks around when you're developing with WordPress in general or with blocks, specifically with blocks that you can use um, to kind of speed up things and see problems as they happen. So the first thing that I want to share with you is specifically the browser developer tools. And I actually went and grabbed a link uh, that talks about where all the different um, developer tools are in the different browsers. So you're welcome to open this up on your side, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna load it up on my screen very quickly. Um, most of the modern browsers all have a developer tools console and you can access it in very different, various different ways. Um, and if we scroll down here, it talks about, um, it's either command option C on a Mac or command, control shift C or I or L on Windows, Linux, whatever, or F12 if you're using different browsers. So depending on what browser you use, it's a good idea to figure out where your developer tools are. Uh, I am using the Brave browser, which uses the Chromium base, which is what Chrome is built on. So when I am working and I, when I want to switch on developer tools, I can simply hit F12 on my keyboard and that pops up my developer tools. I have it on the right-hand side. Some folks have it at the bottom. Um, the other option is you can click on the, the options or the settings uh, for the browser and scroll down to more tools. And then it's their developer tools. And the keyboard shortcut is the, I think it's the option command I or L uh, keyboard shortcut. And that opens developer tools. And the three main things that I use in developer tools are the elements pane, which shows the all of the markup of the page. Uh, you can right click on any element in the page 
inspect it and that'll jump to that element in the elements tab so there's the header for example and if we right click on there and go inspect and it'll jump to that paragraph tag and we can see what that paragraph tags code looks like then we have the console uh, this is very useful for when you're developing in JavaScript, which is what we're doing. And this is where you can you can see any kinds of errors that might be happening in your JavaScript. And you can also log things to the console, which we will do, be doing in a second, so that you can inspect objects and variables and that kind of thing. Um, and then finally, the sources one uh, just shows you what things are being loaded. I don't use this that much, um, but it's handy to know how this works. And then last but not least, I forgot about the network tab. This is another popular one. You can see your AJAX requests and you can see anything that's being fetched, any images and those kind of things. Um, I don't use that so much when I'm developing blocks. I'm using mostly the elements tab and the console tab. Okay, so that's developer tools. Um, I do recommend uh, figuring out how to open your dev tools. That's the shorthand for it and how to switch between the elements and or the console. Um, Linda says, are DevTools different than right-clicking and hitting inspect? No, when you right-click and hit inspect, you're effectively opening up DevTools and going straight to the elements tab and viewing that element. So that, that capability of hitting right-click and inspect switches on DevTools for you. So that's another way you can do it. Um, there's, there's, that's the great thing about the DevTools in the browser. The easy way is just right-click inspect, and then it's there and it's available. Um, so that's how you get around that. The tabs aren't called slightly different things in the different browsers. Um, so, so it's not something that I can explain to everybody. Otherwise, I have to load Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, Firefox, and go through them all. But it's good for you to, <clears throat> excuse me, get used to your developer tools uh, uh, set up in your browser, understand where things are, how to get there, um, and how it all works. Okay, so that was Dev Tools. Um, the other thing is about clearing the browser cache. Now, the reason that I mentioned DevTools first is because in most browsers, uh, Firefox is included and most Chrome-based browsers, which these days includes Brave uh, and the new Microsoft Edge browser, if you have your DevTools open in any one of these tabs, either console, any one of these open, the whole thing is open, you can then usually on your refresh button, which is in the top uh, left of my page here, you can right click on it and then there's usually a, a last option, something along the lines of empty cache and hard refresh or hard reload or something like that. You'll see there's no shortcut attached to it um, because they only make it available when developer tools are switched on. Now what's handy about that when you're working with JavaScript, because browsers are clever and they cache all the front end rendering stuff, so all the style sheets and the images and the JavaScript, Sometimes when you're working with JavaScript code and you just refresh your browser, you might not see the latest version of the code. So I am always, when I'm developing in blocks, developing with my developer tools open, and then I'm always using the empty cache and hard reload option. Uh, so if something is not quite working the way you expect it to, and I think we've had this in a previous workshop where this happened, always use your empty cache and hard reload, and that'll reload everything. You'll notice when I reload now, um, my my block will actually disappear from the editor because I hadn't, I know it's kept it there because I think I might've saved it. I don't, I didn't expect that to disappear, but anyway, um, it might've been because I previewed it, so it saved it. Uh, but if you were just adding it and refreshing, then it would disappear because it hadn't actually been saved. So it's a good idea to have your hard refresh um, option available to you, know where it is and how to find it. It's usually right-clicking on the refresh button and then selecting empty cache and hard reload. Um, and then finally, I want to chat about uh, WordPress debugging. We, we covered this in a previous section uh, almost by accident. It's always a good idea in your local WordPress install. So I'm going to switch back to my code editor here, and I'm going to go and find my wp-config.php file. It's always a good idea to have these two constants, these two PHP constants enabled or switched to true. The first one is WP debug, which is the WordPress debug. So any kind of PHP code, uh, it'll basically, by default, that's off, it's set to false. And what that does is that suppresses any PHP errors. It's a good idea to have that on when you're developing on your local environment so that you see any errors. And the other one is the script debug option. It's a good idea to have that on. The reason for that is, is in, in the WordPress code base, the JavaScript code that is written for most things is written in a clean, human-readable format, and then usually either transpiled or minified or whatever processed before it goes to production. Um, if you switch script debug on, then it loads the developer version of that code. So both versions are shipped with WordPress, but only the, the minified or transpiled one is, um, is, is used. 
But if you enable script debug, it'll use the developer version. And again, any possible errors that you might see or any warnings that you might see will also show in your, in your console, which is what we actually saw in a previous session. So I do recommend switching those on. You go into your wp-config file, you scroll down to run about line 82, there's a defined wp debug one that's usually set to false. So change that to true. And then below that, you can do the defined script debug one and set that to true as well. Um, also notice that you don't, um, you put the, the constants in, in quotes, either single or double quotes. Uh, and then the true or false is just without quotes because that's a Boolean uh, value. So it's just the define with the brackets and then the, the, the constant that you're defining, either WP debug or script debug. And then you set that to true. Okay. Any questions on all of the debugging things we spoke about now? Um, if everybody's happy with that, we can start writing some code while I grab a sip of water. All right, we don't seem to have any questions, so I'm going to move on. Um, awesome. So the first thing that we want to talk about is attributes. Now I'm going to open up a link here quickly where we talk about attributes uh, and what attributes are. Uh, I do recommend, I'm not going to cover this whole document, but I do recommend reading it when you have some time. If you're watching this afterwards, I'm going to just zoom in on it a little bit so we can make it a bit bigger. There we go. Um, and the article talks about what attributes are and how they work and how to use them and all that kind of thing. But in short, attributes are pieces of data that are stored in the block markup. Um, defining attributes is how you develop blocks that your users can edit. So think about attributes like a little bit of data that is being stored on the block. Um, it's it's something that that follows with the block code, it moves with the block, wherever you use the block, that data is available. You can specify the type of data, uh, you can specify, thank you, Shimon, I forgot to hit the link there. Um, you can specify what type of attribute it is and where it reads from and all those kind of things. We're not going to dive into all of that today. We're going to cover that more in a future session. But basically, it's the it's the the data that belongs to the block. It's also, you could think about it as the state of the block. Uh, that's a term that is used in, in, in sort of developer circles as the block state is, is, is the state of the attributes. Um, Block attributes are defined in the block metadata in the block.json file. So we're going to define a very simple attribute now in our block.json. Um, if I scroll down, you'll see the format is basically just to create a top level attributes item and then to give it a name. So in our case, we're going to call it content like the, like the code example. We could call it anything. We could say block content or we could say text content, or whatever. We're going to just use content and we're just going to make it a string type today. That's all we're going to do for now. Uh, so I'm going to switch back over to my, to my code and I'm going to open up my block.json file um, and I'm going to pop it anywhere as a top level item. So anywhere, these are all top level items. I'm going to pop it anywhere there. I like to do it just after the name. Uh, that's just a personal preference. It can even go after the style element if I wanted to, but I just like to put it after name. So I'm going to do double quotes there to follow the format and I'm going to go attributes uh, just after that. And then if we have a look at the, the example code, you'll see that it's basically, it's using this object notation. So this is how you specify a JavaScript object is using the curly braces. Then we give it the attributes name. So what it's gonna be passed around. Then there's another object and that's the, the, the definition of the attribute. Um, so let's go back to the code. So I'm gonna open up those, those braces. Uh, I'm gonna give it a name in our case, content. This is user defined, so developer defined. So I'm saying this attribute is called content. And then I'm going to uh, give it some, some definition. Uh, and for, for, my, for my purposes today, the only thing that I want to do is I want to make it a string type. That's all I want to do for now. Um, I see uh, Sabam is, is copying the code there. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, he's copied the whole thing, but for now, I'm just going to do type string. Um, and I'll exp hopefully, we'll have time to explain why we can get away with this now uh, towards the end. But that's all I want us to do for the time being. Okay. Lastly, you'll see that this category is, is throwing me a little area here, and that's because I haven't got a comma after my end of my attribute object. So I pop a comma in, and now uh, Visual Code Studio is saying, yes, this code is happy, we can move forward. Okay, now to receive these attributes in the block, um, we need to accept it somewhere. And by default, the edit and the save functions receive a number of properties through an object argument, and the attributes are part of that argument. So if we have a look at the block.js code, we'll see here the edit function can accept um, uh, arguments like any other function. 
And so what we can do is we can we can give it a name here. And in our instance, we'll just call it props just for the sake of using what most other folks use. And basically all of the um, the properties for, for this block will get passed to that props object. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could say it's just properties this is because this is developer defined you can call it whatever you want um, and it will always just receive the properties of the block passed to the edit and the save function um, but most folks just use the the props because it's shorter and easier to remember so i'm going to just pop props into my edit function and into my save function um, and then i want us to have a look at what is being passed in those props so to do that we're going to use the console.log function and we're going to console log props in the edit function uh, and what this will do is, is this will output the props into um, the, the, the developer, the dev tools uh, console. But before we do that, I want to do one other thing. I want to give my attribute a default value. And I'm going to give it the default value of the text that we want to use. Um, because when you load the, the block in the, in the editor, you would like that default value to come through somehow. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say add default. And then I'm just going to pop that string in there. Um, and I'm making sure that I'm putting a comma after the, the type and I'm specifying a default value. And that's generally the minimum you need to get away with for, for an attribute to, to kind of work. So we've specified the attributes of content. We've given it a type of string. We've given it a default value. And then in the in the edit function, we've we've set up the argument to receive the attributes in that, in that object. And then we're just logging it out to the editor. And that's what we're going to do for now so we can see what that looks like. If I switch over to my browser um, and I, I'm just going to, that has been saved. So I'm just going to refresh this um, and then I'm going to remove this block uh, there. And then I'm going to refresh again, just so it's all nice and clean. And I'm using that empty cache and hard reload. Um, and you'll see that there, you'll see that there's a couple of errors. And this was something that I saw earlier when I first loaded this page. So I know those errors are fine. But up here, you'll see here are my, my props being, uh, being logged to the console. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can have a look and see what's going on there. And I'm going to move this over to the side here. And you'll see that it has the name of the block. There are the attributes right at the top. So there's the content attribute. And it currently has this value, which is the default value we've specified, it, which is great. And then it has a few other things. Um, it has some on remove functions and on replace function and then a set attributes function. So don't worry too much about what all the other things are doing. Just for now, we're just going to focus on the attributes part of it and the set attributes part. That's that's what's coming through there. Now, while we're here, let's also talk about block props. Before we talk about block props, I just want to pause for a second and just check that everybody's up to speed with, with attributes and how we've set it and how we are seeing it in the console and if there are any questions around any of that. Okay, I don't seem to have any questions. And I, as I mentioned, I, I'm kind of pushed for time, so I'm going to continue. But if you do have questions, feel free to send them through in the chat. The other thing I wanted to, to discuss is this whole block prop story. Um, and this is where it gets, it gets confusing when you, when you talk about the blocks props and block props. So very quickly, block props is, is defined because we're using the use block props React hook. Use block props is a special function in... Um, React world and currently in the Gutenberg block editor world that does a whole bunch of things. It sets up a whole bunch of functions and it automatically sets up things like the block class name, uh, the ARIA tab and all of those kind of things. And because we are setting up the block props uh, object here and passing it to the element, what it does if we have a look at the block on the front end and if we inspect this block is it automatically sets up things like, let me just make this a bit bigger, uh, it sets up things like the tab index, the block ID, the role, the ARIA label, the block type, the title, the class. So that's basically everything related to the container element for the block. Now, our block is very simple. It just has a paragraph tag and a child element with some text. That's all it is. But blocks can be more complicated. They can have a div and then multiple paragraphs and then maybe other divs and other components and other elements inside them. And the block props variable that we create by saying use block props will only affect that container tag. Now, as we continue through this through the series of workshops, we're going to be adding additional elements and we'll understand better how that works. 
but that's what block props does. Um, if you remember from the previous session, when we applied block props to our element, it, it, it automatically enabled the toolbar for the block. And that was because the block now had this, where is it, uh, class. It had the, uh, I can't find it now. Yeah, the WP, WP block class. So the minute it passed the WP block class, then it set up the toolbar and the toolbar started working. The props, or in, in our case, the properties are specific to just this block. So use block props, you can use on any block and it runs a whole bunch of things automatically. The props that are passed to the edit function and the save function are specific to this block as we're working on it here. It also does some automatic things in the background, but it'll always be specific to the code we're working with. And as we saw earlier, it'll pass through the attributes and the set attributes function. Okay. Any questions on all of that before we start applying this attribute? Okay, doesn't seem to be any questions, so let's move on. Now, before we start using this attribute, we need to look at using something that can accept this data and allows the user to change this data. Currently, we're just rendering a paragraph, which is not great. We could render something like a text area, um, but that doesn't quite work as well as we need it to, and it makes things a little bit confusing. So in WordPress uh, developer land, we have this very amazing component called the rich text component. Uh, and I'm going to find, there's the attributes on that page. So I'm going to find the rich text reference guide. And I'm going to pop it into the chat here. Um, and the rich text element effectively uses something that I forgot about until recently called a content editable input. And I'm going to open up that um, link as well. So a content editable input, you can, if you have a look at this code here, you can see this code is being applied to a block quote, content editable true, uh, and then it allows you to edit a block quote. <laughs> uh, that's a new thing that, that came about in, in uh, HTML and JavaScript in, in sort of recent years, where you can specify an element as content editable, and that allows you to then edit it. So you don't have to use a text area, you can just use a content editable area. Um, and so the rich text reference allows you to render a content editable input and give it a specific tag. So you can say, I want it to be, in our case, a P tag. And it will then render a P tag and render it as content editable. So that's what we're going to do. Now, the cool thing about rich text is rich text exists, if we have a look at this plain code here, um, in, if we can find where's rich text, I'm not going to find it now, am I? Uh, let me go back to the um, the how-to guides, because that's where they're using it. Uh, let's find it here quickly. Here we go, if we scroll down. Um, and we find it here, over here. There we go. Rich text comes from the block editor package. And we're already using the block editor package because we're getting used block props. So we don't have to worry about any dependencies. We're already using block editor in our code, which is great. We can just grab rich text from um, the block editor. So I'm just going to copy this line out over here. And I'm going to pop this at the very top of my code over here. Uh, there we go. So now we're saying create a variable called rich text and get the rich text component from the block editor uh, object and allow us to use it. Excellent. So then we're going to now change our edit function so that we replace just the plain paragraph tag with the rich text element. So I'm going to copy rich text there and I'm going to pop it in over there. And now we've got block props and we've got the content. Okay, now let's test this code and let's see what this does. I'm going to just comment out this console log here. So we've just, all we've added is we've added the props. That's all we've done for now. And then we've added rich text to the code at the top here by calling block editor.rich text. And we've changed it and we've put rich text in the, where the paragraph tag used to be. So let's refresh and let's see what that does. I'm going to make my dev tools a little bit smaller so we can actually see what's going on. And we're going to refresh. Um, I might have to remove the block first. Okay, it's giving us an error, which is to be expected. So I'm going to remove it. And then I'm going to go back to my console. I'm going to clear the errors out and then I'm going to add it. And there it gives us an error. And if we scroll up to the top of that error, it says to us that, let me just get there, um, uncaught, uncaught type error, children is not a function at rich text wrapper. 
Okay, so what that's telling us is that the rich text component doesn't work with children elements like a plain paragraph does. Um, and if we go and read about rich text and understand how it works, rich text needs a value attribute. Uh, it is in the in the documentation, uh, but if we have a look at content editable, for example, um, content editable is, that is not rich text. But if we have a look at the rich text, I, I think I had it over here previously. Let's go back one. Um, here we go. I found it the other day, and now I'm not going to find it, am I? <laughs> um, I'm not going to find it now. But anyway, it, it can't work with children elements like we do with a regular paragraph tag. We need to specify a value property. Now, the way we can specify a value for rich text is we can pass it in the object that is being passed to the block. In this case, that's block props. So the one way we could do that is we could change this object and we could say, look, we just want to pass in value and then pass in the value that we want to pass. But we want to use use block props as well because that gave us the class and all those things. So now we use something in, in, uh, in JavaScript called object assign, uh, which I will find for you here in a second. Here it is. An object assign is very similar to PHP's array merge. And what it does is it allows you to take an existing object and add things to it. And all we want to do is we want to add a value to block props. So what we can do is using object assign, so it's object assign target and then give it a source. So we can do this and we can say, instead of just passing block props, we can say object assign and we want to update block props. And then we pass in a new object. So it's using the object notation and we say value. And then we pass it the value that we want to give it. In this case, we can pass in the hello JavaScript world bit. Uh, I think I've just copied something I shouldn't. Let me just move this out the way. Yes, I have. Uh, there we go. Hello JavaScript world. And then we can get, a, get, get rid of this child element at the end there. So there we go. So we're still returning the same element. Now we've changed it from paragraph to rich text. And then we're taking block props and we're updating whatever's in there. And we're adding a new item called value. And the value has the string that we had originally. So now if we refresh that code, we shouldn't see that error again. So let us refresh here. Okay, we're getting a different error, but that's not related to this. So that's cool. So that means we're not getting an error. So now we're using rich text in the way that it wants to be used. Instead of passing it the third parameter in the element, which is the children, we're passing it the value because the value needs to be updated. And if you have this in your browser, you can now edit your code. Okay. You'll see that it's giving me an, an unadjusted change error, which we'll get to in a second, but at least it's rendering rich text and I can edit this code. I'm gonna pause for a second if anybody's coding along and they're having any problems or they need got any questions. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to the next step. Keeping a drastic eye on the time here so that we don't run out of time. Okay. So now this, this area here says to us that your on change, adjusted on change is not a function. And that is because rich text also requires an on change function to be set up so that when you make a change, it can do something with this new information. And what it's expecting it to do is be able to save that back to the attribute value. So let's implement that in the code. So the first thing that we can do is we can use from the props, we can replace this content here uh, I've done it again. Sorry, I've got things on my screen that are making me not be able to see things like I want to. Um, we can update this text with props, attributes, and then our content attribute that we specified. So that'll take the default value, hello JavaScript world, and we're going to change this from the block.json. Um, so that's passing that to the value. Then we need to specify the on change event. And we can do that in the same object that we're passing in the value to apply it to block props. So to be able to make that a little bit readable, I'm going to move things onto new lines here. So I'm going to move rich text to a new line, object assigned to a new line, and then close that over there. And then I'm going to do this. And I'm going to pop this object down here, just so it makes it a little bit easier for me to read. And I'm going to make that on a new line and that on a new line, again, just to make it easier to read. So all I want to do now is I want to pass an unchange event or an unchange method into my object that is being merged into block props. 
So the first thing I do is I specify the on change, uh, which looks like that. And then I need to give it a function that it's going to be called when the content changes. And in our case, I'm just going to go on change content. Um, I still need to define this, this function, uh, but that'll do for now. I also need to add the comma between the object attributes so that I don't get errors. So now an on change is specified. So, so the rich, that error will go away. So every time the, the uh, editor, the, sorry, the rich text component gets, gets changed, it'll fire that on change. But now I need that to do something. So I need to specify that function at the top here. So up here, we can say function on change content, and then we can do something with this content. And what is going to be passed is some updated content or some new content. I'm just gonna say new content. Um, so whenever I, and let's actually just log that to the console so we can actually see that working. Uh, da, da, da. So log new content. That's all I want to do for now. Okay. So we specified an onChange event handler. Basically, it's whenever something changes, then fire this function called onChangeContent. The onChangeContent function will receive the updated value and simply log it to the console. Okay. So let's have a look at that. So again, if we refresh here, oh, I didn't do a hard refresh, did I? Ha <laughs> uh, Let's do a hard refresh, hard reload in this case. Okay, so the errors that we're seeing are not related to our code, which is great. If we hit there and we hit change, there you can see the updated code coming through in my console. And I'll be honest, this is really cool to watch happen. <laughs> um, so what that means is that new content variable is receiving whatever's being changed in our rich text component, which is perfect. So now we can write that back to the content attributes in the block attributes. And how we do that, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that set attributes function that gets passed in props. We use set attributes to update the content attributes. So let me show you how that works. So first of all, we grab props over here and we say props and then set attribute was passed into props. So we can set attributes and that's a function that, is, that belongs to that props object. And then the content that we wanna change is the content attribute, it's, it, it's called content. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm just checking my code here very quickly. Um, one second, folks. <laughs> yeah, I can find it now. <laughs> um, there we go. Okay, so all we have to do when we use set attributes is we pass in an object. So this is very similar to object assign. Um, we pass in a new object with the name of our attribute, in this case, content, and whatever we want to update content to, in this case, the new content being passed to the onChange. Um, and we could we could make we could do now what's cool about this is we could do things with new content we could add stuff to it if we wanted to we could go off and fetch data whatever and then update the content so if we do that now and then there if we load this into the browser we will we will not see anything different but the attribute is being updated so what would be very cool is to actually be able to see this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to console log props.attributes at the top here. Uh, actually, let's do props.attributes.content so we can see what it was before, when it loads. And then let's console log props.attributes content after we update it. So we can actually see if it is being updated. So there it's, this will log it once the edit function fires. And then as soon as we update it, then this console log will happen. So let's have a look at that. Let's remove this again. Let's do an empty cache and hard reload. And there it is. And let's just hide all of those for now and let's see what happens. So there the edit function is fine. So that's changed. And then we can see the new value. And we can see it's on block seven. The new value is now whatever it was. And if we change it again, it fires and fires, fires, and that's the new value. So every time we're changing it, that attribute that is loaded with a block is being updated. It's doing what we wanted to do. That's great. But now we need to save that somewhere. And that's where we do that in the save function. So in the save function, we're going to do similar things to what we did here in our edit function. We're going to pass in the rich text. But because we're saving, we don't do just the rich text component. We do rich text content. So that's basically just the output of the rich text component. 
we can do the same block props and then we can also pass in the same value so we can do the same object assigned stuff over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on a new line so it's easy to see and we can take away that and take away that and do the same block props object assign and give it the same value props attributes content and we can remove the on change because we don't need any on change things happening in the save we just need to receive the content so what that's going to do is that's going to render the, the element and save it to the database with the updated value so that when we refresh it on the front end we will see the change if we look at our code now and we change this hello javascript world and we change it all the way down to there and then we say save this and then we say preview this in the new tab it's still using all the original content so it's not passing it to the save function but now with this new code passing the props to the save function and updating the element with the rich text content and assigning the object with the new value it'll apply it to the save function so now if we go back here and hard reload okay now we're getting some errors now the reason we saw that error is because we had a previously saved version of this and wordpress is going hang on you saved it with a previous value and now you're coming with a new value and i don't understand that so that's one of the reasons why i always will uh, remove my blocks from the page and i will save the, the page and then do the hard refresh if i'm in development I'll always clear the generally clear the block out so that i don't get any of these weird save functions okay so that's fine all those errors we expected so that's great so now if we add the block there the block is added with the default values we're still seeing those console logs that we left in the edit so let's update this and say uh, something like hello javascript world let's say um, edited in the block editor and we're seeing that will fire and go off and do its thing and there it's saved so now if we preview this in the new tab now we see edited in the block error in the block editor now you'll see there's an issue with some styling going on there um, and we will have a look at why that's doing that in a second but at least the attribute content is working it's saving the attribute where it needs to save okay um, now the reason that that error is happening is uh, because we also need to tell um, the element what tag name to apply if we have a look at the code up over here um, here we go we just specified rich text but we didn't tell it what kind of element to create whether it should be a paragraph or not a paragraph or whatever the case may be so what you also generally need to do is you need to specify a tag name um, which you can pass into this object that's being passed to um, the block props so let's do that so we'll make that a paragraph tag and we'll need to do the same in the in there as well and then that will find the classes and all those kind of things and make things work so if we update that now we should see um, this working what I'm also going to do is I'm going to remove all of these console logs because that's going to get a little bit annoying I'm just going to remove that there quickly and I'm going to remove that one um, and I'm going to remove that one there and then let's go back and test this so if we empty and hard reload this now we should see things start working okay we're again getting a validation error because things have changed so that's fine let's remove it and refresh uh, if, if you get that block validation error while you're coding it probably means you just need to clear things out and start over okay those errors we've seen before we know they're not to do with our block so let's add our block again and then let's edit it and now we should when we preview this see everything working on the front end there it is hello javascript world edited in the block area so the reason that happened is because we had to specify the tag name we had to tell rich text to render a paragraph tag in both the edit and the save um, and then it renders the same content editable area uh, sorry element with the same classes and then the styling all works so that is a requirement whenever you're using rich text you do need to specify that tag name any questions we've got about 13 minutes left so we might do some cleanup afterwards um, which will be good uh, but any questions on all of that before before we wrap up 
I'm literally just editing some notes of mine here because I picked up an error in my notes for this session. <laughs> okay. There don't seem to be any, any questions. So just to refresh, we pass, we, we don't pass, we create a variable in the edit and the save function to receive the blocks properties, which includes the blocks attributes and the set attributes function. We then updated the element render to use the rich text component. And to do that, we needed to assign both the tag name and the value and the onChange event handler to the block prop so that we could use those things. Uh, the tag name in this case was simply a paragraph tag. We could have made that a div. Uh, any kind, I think there's a couple that rich text can handle. Uh, let's have a look at the doc. Uh, yeah, it could be anything. Uh, editable tag can be set to any block level, div, h2, paragraph, whatever you want. In our case, we're working with a paragraph tag. Um, the value will be the, the, the value of content. So when it loads the first time, it'll be the default value. If you save it and it loads it after a save, it'll be whatever's in the saved value. Um, and then we specified the unchanged content function. So it's take the new value when it gets edited and update it based on that. And then in the save function, we set up the same props, set up the same rich text. In this case, it's rich text content because we just want to render the content. Uh, and then we specify again the tag name and then the updated value. Now, the last thing I just want to mention, we probably won't do some of the other refactoring that I wanted to do, but the last thing I wanted to mention is that when you are creating your attributes, in the uh, documentation about attributes, it talks about, um, let me open up this link, which I'll copy into the chat now. It talks about the fact that attributes have to have a type or an enum, uh, but they can also have a source and they can have a selector and then they can have an attribute defined. So this is a URL attribute. It's called URL and it has a string type. Its source is the attribute the selector is the image tag, and then the attribute is the source. And that gets confusing. And all that means is when you are using attributes, the attributes content can be stored in different places in the block. If the block is like in our case, it's a rich text component, which renders a paragraph tag. The content is effectively just the content of the paragraph tag. Um, so the, the, um, the source, the, way, the source means where do I read that? data from. And in this case, because the paragraph tag, the source is the HTML of the paragraph tag, which is the text. Um, and then the selector is to say, well, which element inside of my block must I read the source, in our case, the HTML from? And in our case, the selector would be the P, the paragraph tag. In this example that you're looking at here, because there is a um, an image tag, you can also specify an attribute that it needs to read it from. So in this case, it's an attribute source. In other words, reading it from an attribute of the image element and the attribute that it needs to read is the source attribute. Now, in future sessions, I'm planning on doing one where we load a background image. And so we'll then need to specify that attribute and use this and we'll deal with that there. Um, but that's basically just telling, telling WordPress what, when we load this attribute data, where do we get it from within the element? So it's a good practice. You'll notice we didn't do it in our in this code, but it's a good practice when you specify the type to also specify the source, um, which in our case, it's an HTML source. And then also specify the selector, which in our case is simply the paragraph tag. Now, the reason it worked earlier is because we just had the one paragraph tag. If you had, let's say, a div tag, and then a paragraph tag inside of that div tag, and you had this content set up like that, it would look for the, the element with the paragraph tag for the source data, not the div tag. So it becomes more important when you have multiple attributes set up. In our case, when we just have one setup, we don't need to worry about that too much because it, it knows to read it from the main paragraph. But it's a good, it's a good practice to get into to specify the source, specify the selector, um, so that it knows where to read it from. Okay. That is my bit for today. Uh, I'm not going to have time to do the other things that I wanted to do. I'm going to try and record them after the session and add them on. And it's basically just some doing refactoring and that kind of thing. Um, but this was a slightly different way of looking at using rich text, using the attributes. Um, as I've mentioned in, in, in the workshop, I have documented all of this in the readme of the, uh, of the GitHub repository as well. So if you go to, I'll copy the link now. Let me just get it here. Um, and it's the WP learn JavaScript. 
if you click on any one of the three folders, which is the different steps as we're working through, it now has a readme document that you can read through and it covers all the things we've covered in the workshop. Uh, and I was actually referring to this as my notes when I was covering through this. So if you're not sure of anything, everything is in this document, all the links are there, um, all the examples are there, uh, and it explains how everything works and shows the possible errors that you might see and what they mean. Um, so that is my bit for today. I think that's where we're going to wrap it up. Does anybody have any questions, any comments, anything they want to add um, before we call it a day? No problem, Linda. Thank you as, as always for joining me. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, familiar faces. Um, so the plan is next week, or hopefully next week, we're going to add a few more attributes to this block. The goal is to add an attribute so that we can manage the styles. Um, so eventually I want to, to do away with the style sheets and we're going to manage the style in the block. So we're going to manage the background, the color and the padding as attributes. And then, as I mentioned as well, I want to add a background image to the block, um, uh, because that'll go dive into the deeper element of how the attributes work, uh, and give you a good, a good understanding. So we're going to have, we're going to change it to like a div and the div will have a background image and then there will be the rich text inside the div so we're using multiple elements inside of other elements um, and those kind of things that that's the eventual goal the other goal as well is also just to work through um all of these uh steps in the in the blocks creating a blocks tutorial so we're going to be talking about toolbars and sidebars when we do the future attributes we're, in future sessions, we'll be talking about block supports. We'll be talking about dynamic blocks, uh, how you can render them in PHP. Yes, I can certainly paste the Git link there for you. Um, I do try and keep this up to date as we finish each session. Uh, so you're welcome to have a look at that code, check it out, play with it, fork it. If you have, if you find any bugs in the code, please log them as issues, and I will update this code. This is going to be a living document, a living piece of code that we can use through these sessions, um, and you're welcome to grab it at any time and, and use the code there. It's completely open source. Um, anyway, as I was saying, we're going to also look at uh, block supports and dynamic blocks. We won't, we probably won't cover generating blocks with WPCLI. Uh, we're probably going to be looking at nested blocks at some point using inner blocks. Uh, we probably won't extend the query loop block. That's a little bit outside of the scope of, of what I want to achieve in, in these workshops. But that's the eventual goal is to kind of cover all of these things, but also build a block that actually is something. Um, I'm still I'm still thinking about maybe it'll be like a call to action block or a header block uh, that if you want to, you can even use in your own projects as a basis for, for building future blocks. But that's my bit for today, folks. Thank you all so much for joining me today. Um, this workshop will be going up on WordPress study TV tomorrow. Um, I was going to override the previous one with this one, but I think having them both is a good idea because it's two different ways of looking at it. So I'm going to look at maybe adding this as a new one. Um, we'll see. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, but anyway, thank you all for joining me. It was lovely to see those of you who are here today. Uh, to my American friends who are here, enjoy your Thanksgiving later on this evening. Uh, and I will see you all again next week.